with everyone's response of my videos i'm getting lots of good comments and uh, thank you so much i mean it means a lot when you're putting lots of effort and when people acknowledge that and when they say that you know it's a good video or you know it's a good quality video or in a way that i inspire someone that you know it really means a lot and thank you so much for that and uh, yes coming back to today's our class uh, till yesterday i mean till previous i think we are done with the forest and if it is the first time that you're watching this video for the geography pertinent i request you all to go back to the previous video because this is a continuous class and it wouldn't make sense to you if you haven't seen the previous video i think uh, we started with the wildlife and uh, natural vegetations so uh, first the first concept that we cleared was the forest and there are lots of categories and varieties of forest that is tropical deciduous temperate deciduous and uh, you know the evergreen and the coniferous and all these montane all these different kinds of forest that we went through last class so today we are going to study about uh, you know the shrubs i think yes we are all done with this deciduous the dry deciduous and the moist deciduous and the difference between all these things i'm not going through this but just reminding all what we you know went through the previous sets, sessions and uh, yes and if you have any doubts anything regarding the previous sessions do let me know even now itself i mean i could just give you out your reply i you know i have my phone here so it's okay and uh, today we are going to cover yes uh, okay so uh, i think we uh, we are done till the montane forest montane forest is taiga or taiga means in russian word taiga means pure or untouched by humans why do we say it's taiga the, the reason is that you know if uh, like i already covered in previous class but i think i should just you know give a brush up of your uh, you know memory so this is how uh, typical mountains length and feet the height is, is all about so as we go up what we find is that the vegetation and the density or the intensity of the vegetations will decrease and here what we find here uh, that is uh, from the ground 1000 to 2000 meters above from the ground what do we find here it's wet temperate evergreen broad leaf forest but once we go to 1500 to 3000 meters uh, from the uh, from the land level what do you find here what the difference that we are going to find here as we go up the leaves are going to be you know more like needle shape they got to be more sharper as we as the you know the vegetations go up and as they go up what happens they're going to be like shrubs mosses and lichens and uh, you know it's pretty much difficult or impossible for us to go and touch all these snow cap regions and all these vegetations over here in the most peak or the topmost part of here and that's the reason why it's been called as taiga taiga means untouched and over here yes probably because this will be like almost uh, close to the valley and you know we have an access to this place and uh, that's the reason why it's called taiga or montane and coniferous forest and sure enough the names are different but the concept is same and uh, i don't think i have to keep on going about the same topic and uh, what influence the kind of vegetations found in the mountains the decrease in temperature that is as we go up as the altitude increases temperature they falls down that is the more we go up the temperature will go down that is it becomes start becomes more cooler as we go up and there is succession of natural vegetation belts in the same order as we see from the tropical to the tundra region why is that even for the plants that is for all kinds of uh, you know biological organisms for anything they need oxygen to sustain and as they go what happens since the temperature is very you know very low it's very cold over there it wouldn't be possible for them to have oxygen and also uh, you know like uh, we have a concept called as cold desert even we have the hot desert and the cold ones so what is the cold desert that is even if there is some sort of precipitations that is snow is a form of precipitation it is a form of water but what the problem is that since it's very very much colder uh, you know there wouldn't be uh, humidity or there wouldn't be a chance of water the water will be dried up by ice so for those reasons plants it will be difficult for these vegetations to be there so uh, and coniferous forests are also called as taiga and like i said these are all different names but the concepts are very much similar and uh, sure enough like i remember i think i studied this in 6th or 7th standard class and there were lot many names that you know tundra and uh, you know temperate deciduous uh, tropical deciduous coniferous and all these names they were so confusing and one thing i have to say is that understand what these terms implies that is what is temperate 
you understand temperate means between the equator that is just above and just below the equator between the uh, tropic of capricorn and cancer that is between these equate these two latitudes are called as temperate um, and tropical and temperate is above that that is between these north poles and between these tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and they are more closer towards sea poles so for those reasons temperate are much more colder or cooler than the uh, you know the temperate uh, tropical regions so just understand first what the concepts are and then it will be easier for us to have all sorts of combinations and you know whatever questions they throw at us it will be easier for us to answer it and okay reduce the size of cam i'm sorry okay now it's fine are you able to see it okay i'm so sorry and uh, yes and uh, the next one is grasslands that is as we yes that is uh, according to the natural vegetation that is what is being indigenous to that particular uh, particular place uh, there are three categories three broad categories in which everything could be categorized as first one is forest then is grasslands then is shrubs shrubs or desert forms of so we are already done with forest now is grassland grassland what is that there wouldn't be big trees and all there will be like grasses and the length of grasses will be you know varying some you know some there there will be stubble grasses and some places there will be you know long grasses the prairies and savannas all these are entirely different and uh, even though there are grasses some will be very much taller as of you know 6 feet and all so we are going to you know study and get into the details of these grasslands and uh, just for this you know sake of our knowledge just understand there is only three categories of it and do not confuse yourself with all these terms and concepts and all because it's very much simpler once we get to know the concept it will be very much simpler and yes so we'll get into the grasslands so i just presume that everything is clear till here that is all the forest session uh, till the forest session so everything is clear okay i'll reduce it even now it's fine okay i'm so sorry okay um uh, yeah yes so grasslands are areas where vegetations are mainly grass yes as the name implies what is it grasslands means the places where the mainly the vegetation maximum the most of it will be grasses and grasslands are usually found between drier areas and wetter areas that is you know you cannot just restrict within just a single category saying the grasses only would occur over here because you know there are chances that grasses would be there in many places and there are grasslands with tall grasses others with short uh, grasses scattered around the world yes there are going to be stubble grasses and very long you know very lean grasses are going to be there and in north america grasslands are called prairies in south america gra grasslands are called pampas wild is a name for grass in south africa and north africa you can you can find savannas and if you have seen madagascar movie you, you know the madagascar movie of alex and mori you can see that it was in africa the first one okay the first one i think uh, madagascar sk from new york i don't remember the tagline of the movie i think it's first part and that is uh, the african that is the savannas that we are talking about so uh, like i said in the previous sessions you know you could just compare it with all these google images just type all these things and then you know type savannas type all these pampas and all so you could get an image and then it will be so much easier for you to connect and have a meaning out of it so this is just my request and it will be so much easier and uh, yes so we have three categories tropical temperate and thorny so we are all completely thorough with what all these tropical temperate and thorny implies so what is tropical tropical is you know somewhere in and around your equator suppose this is the equator and between your tropic of capricorn and cancer is called, is called as your tropical area so all these places all the grasses uh, you know in and around this equator is called as tropical grassland and what do you call as temperate grasslands that is above your uh, tropical region that is between the poles and the these tropic of cancer and capricorns the both belt okay the both these spaces this is known as temperate grasslands and thorny bushes as an in implies it's very much easier for you to know it thorny means you know it something to do with deserts and all and the uh, other categories are also there and uh, you this will be much more simpler i think compared to your forest these grasslands are much simpler and one thing uh, that distinguishes but between the other vegetation is that 
we are going to have varieties of names associated with it that is all these uh, you know savanas pampas and all and weld and all so you know uh, for example we have different continents but names are assigned for all these continents like africa america north america south america asia europe so it's just like that all these names are being assigned to these grasses and only these things that you have to remember and it's pretty much simpler for grasslands so yeah tropical grasslands these occur on the either side of equator that we uh, that all already covered that is what is tropical you know it doesn't have to be tropical forest or tropical evergreen or tropical coniferous anything to do with tropical is in and around your equator so just get that in your mind it will be so much easier and grows in an area of moderate to low rain uh, low amount of rainfall the grasses can grow uh, very tall about 3 to 4 meters in the height they cover much of africa as well as larger areas of australia south america and india elephant zebras giraffe deer leopards common in tropical grasslands tropical grasslands are also ho home to large animal uh, on earth that is you know uh, what is the largest animal on earth that is uh, on the land that is elephant and on the water is blue whale so uh, you know just when you say tropical grassland remember all these features everything of these tropical areas tropical areas are going to be mostly sunny that is since they are uh, you know in and around the equator they going to get the maximum sun sunlight from the sun since you know it's going to be directly fall and fall on them they going to have lots of you know sunlight and ample amount of water and rain for precipitations everything will be taken care of and uh, we we get lots of water so what is that since they get lots of water the height will also be increased to 3 to 4 meters that is they able to grow well enough so all the places that we can find is in australia africa south america and even some places in india and yes these are the animals and i think it's very much typical for us to know and uh, just remember this madagascar movie the first part uh, i think it's first part itself so just remember you know just relate everything in terms of images or any other creative forms because it's not practically possible for us to remember all these concepts and these factual informations and then just throw it down on your paper you have to have you know some sort of connection it will be easier because Uh, you know sometimes it wouldn't be possible for us to have a quick revisions every now and then suppose you know you could you would just study this portion now and then you'll have to or you know just get a chance probably the next year so for those reasons i uh, you know i request you all to you know just connect everything and you know then you study so next is temperate uh, grasslands that is where is that temperate is above the tropical and uh, they are mid latitudes and temperate grasslands are home to many large herbivores some of these includes bison gazelle and zebras rhinoceros and wild horses temperate grasslands are composed of rich mix of grasses and forbs and underlying many some of the world's most fertile soil that is for example all these european these you know finland or sweden netherlands all these places if you remember what do you associate with all the animals that you find all these you know the horses and all so you know have those places in your mind and then you write down so that will be so much easier and these places will be a bit more cooler than the tropical regions and uh, these are the lands of largest herbivores that is deers and antelopes everything would be found over here and yes temperate grasslands have temperature continental climate which is cooler than savannas and savannas is in the african regions okay temperate grasslands can be divided into tall grass areas and short grass areas that is even within the temperate grasslands we could categorize on the basis of the length or the height of these grasses it could be like the tall ones or the short ones and uh, thorny bushes these are found in dry desert regions and that is for example all these deserts that we find they're going to have all these thorny bushes and these uh, you know the short shrubs somewhat similar to cactus they're going to be very short and the reason is that they cannot afford to be huge and humongous because they don't have the water they don't have the water to sustain themselves so the shorter they'll be it will be easier for them to circulate water throughout the systems and they need water for you know circulating there you know just like we need blood why do we need blood blood is what carries oxygen and your food nutrients that you eat and everything will be passed on through the blood so they need water for that so for those reasons they are going to be very short in a way that they'll conserve lots of lots of water and uh, tropical deserts are located on the western margins of the continents which species cover is scarce and because scanty rains and scorching heat the growth of natural vegetation is very limited here that is 
if you seen uh, these images or if you personally go, gone to any desert areas that you could see that sure enough there are going to be bushes and all these thorny thorny you know plants and all but they are going to be very limited they are going to be scattered everywhere and their roots are going to be very long and they are going to like scatter to lots of places why even though the uh, suppose this is the land and this is a small uh, you know bush or a thorny bush area the grasses i mean their roots are going to be very long and scattered everywhere so that they could get maximum resources maximum resources in the sense maximum water and for those reasons the shrubs and the bushes are going to be very short and tiny and only mosses lichens are very small shrubs found here it grows you in the very short summer this is called the tundra type of vegetations this type of vegetations is found in polar of europe asia and north america that i have already covered that just because desert you know it doesn't have to be very hot desert it also can also be the other kind that is the colder ones and the hot deserts so you know cold doesn't mean it should be uh, you know it have precipitation sure now these snows are form of precipitations but they are very much dry for those reasons it will be difficult to sustain vegetations now we're going to get into the wildlife wildlife is an integral part of an ecosystem wildlife can be found in all ecosystem deserts forests that is even in the deserts that is all these dry deserts what we're going to find we're going to find scorpions and these venomous deadly snakes and no matter what the vegetation what the climate what the resources that the animals get they're going to be all these wildlife wild animals scattered throughout the world and throughout the whole area and the other areas including the most developed urban cities even in urban cities we are going to find cockroaches you cannot just expect just because all these pavements are concrete paved we are not uh, not going to find any frogs or all these you know wild animals we are not going to domesticate all these animals for sure and all have distinct form of wildlife and preservation of rare wildlife is of great importance now that is you know for us in india we have lots of conservation practices and uh, we have saved tiger project and many other and uh, the reason is that you know they are declining uh, rate by rate and the year that we look into it uh, that is there used to be a time here not just in here in most of the places that poaching and hunting was supposed to be a game and they used to have a certain fun out of it so for those reasons the animals are being very much extinct and the other reasons is because of the urbanization since how do we have urbanizations we are going to you know fall down all these trees we are going to cut down the forest we are going to do all these deforestation so that we could you know build houses and all these make buildings and all so for those reasons the animals are being very much extinct and uh, to maintain the ecological balance of nature and maintain the food chain and nature's of cycle and uh, these are why we are going to conserve these animals it's not just for a fun or just for a you know because we like this animal or we are particular about or just because tigers are national it doesn't mean that they they are sustained they are important they are part of the food cycle food cycle and a food chain it has economic value many wild plants provide useful substance like timber paper gums etc and they also have wide applications in ayurveda and other branches of medicines wild animals products are tusk ivory leather and honey sure enough there are some products which are illegal and uh, there i am not sure what you call as in some place is called black monkey and you know it's a form of uh, you know a type of category of monkey what these people is do they capture this monkey kill it and some form of the other they extract oil out of it and it is to be believed that you will be you know forever young and it revitalizes you and it's been still practiced and it's so cynical and uh, everything is happening and sure enough honey is to an extent it is not considered to be illegal but some places ivory and leather they are illegal works being carried out and uh, it has to be controlled to a large extent and wildlife is a source of livelihood and subsistence that is we are using all these resources where do we get all these resources from as we have discussed in the first class of geography that is there are only two categories of resources one is a natural resource the other is artificial sure enough the, uh, the natural or the, these resources we are getting from the nature but the artificial ones we are indirectly or directly de deriving from the nature we are converting we are you know just letting it through a series of process we are converting in a form that it is more you know of our requirement so what happens when all these things cease to exist we are going to you know run out of it i know it sure now it sounds selfish but uh, yes we need that for our existence for our sustenance and due to existence of wildlife on earth humans get benefit to sustain life wild plants Uh, wildlife plays an essential role in ecological and biological processes that are yet to again 
significance to life. The normal functioning of biosphere depends on endless interactions amongst animals, plants, and microorganisms. That is, you know, this small enclosure that I'm in here. I am, you know, I'm not the only one over here. There is, a, you know, a plant over here on my table. And this happens, even though this is just a small ecosystem, small, you know, my space or environment, there are tiny microbes or microbial organisms, which I am not able to see it. And, uh, you know, all these things are important, no matter what your size or what your uh, role to your environment or ecology is. Everything plays a role. And this is a form of chain and system. And once the chain is broken, it will be very much difficult for us to maintain the balance. And the next is mangrove forest. I'm sorry, I think I didn't uh, cover the forest part, uh, the mangrove forest part. So I'll, you know, I'll just cover it now. These are found in the coast uh, areas of coast influenced by tides. That is one of the most important mangrove forests here in India, yes, Sundarban Delta's region. All these Sundari mangroves and all that we find. And I think we are very much familiar with this. I think most of the people know about it the Sundarbans, Delta regions. And uh, as we can see over here, is that because of high salinity, that is because the salt will be very much high, what happens? They cannot, you know, the roots cannot go down. They, you know, stand up and these roots, they kind of breathe for oxygen. So it's a very dis uh, different systems over here. And uh, dense mangroves are common varieties with roots of plants submerged underwater found in the deltas of Ganga, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari and Kaveri. Sundari trees are found in Ganga. Yes, the most important ones of us. Brahmaputra Delta provide durable hard timber and other plants are palm, cotton, uh, coconut, cure, nagar. Famous animal found is royal Bengal tiger. That is in this place and common animals found is turtles, crocodiles and gharials and snakes. And so this is the picture. And the next is about the India. That is, uh, till here, we just, you know, went through all these wide varieties of these vegetations of flora and fauna. Now, we're going to concentrate much on the Indian part. So, this is the map. I'm I'm not sure whether this is visible, you know, properly. Everything is being distinguished over here. So, I'll just read out over here. So, this is the Alpine or the Montane or the Tundra. And just because Nepal and Bhutan is not part of the India, we cannot mark it brown. And, uh, you know, everything is being precisely given over here. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I'll just quote this by this. So, this is the temperate grasslands that is just below all these, you know, Himachal and Haryana, all these places. What is that they get? That is from the mountains, the water is being trickling down to the valley. And this is the plains over here. So, they're going to have lush green leaves. I mean, lush green grasses and everything will be here. And this part is deciduous. Uh, and we, like India, we have both moist and dry. So this is the moist one and this is the dry one. And uh, once we, like we were going through the deciduous forest, I, I, you know, I think I mentioned that India, the most part of the vegetation cover is the deciduous. And we have the both of it that is moist and dry. So this is moist, this is dry. And this is the tropical uh, thorn that is all these dry areas that you find. And, um, you know, I don't have to specially mention all these places, you know, Rajasthan, Gujarat and all. So, this is, uh, you know, the temperate evergreen. And uh, uh, the small one is written over here, it's wet temperate, but you don't have to take that into consideration. Throughout the Western Ghats, it's actually tropical evergreen. That is, they're going to be green throughout the year. And not all the trees are going to shed together. And they're going to do it little by little, you know, probably one set of trees will shed this time, the other will be shed shedding the next month. And what we find is that throughout the year, they seem to be green. And this is just a factual information. So take this uh, point into consideration. You could just either take a screenshot or, you know, uh, write it down. And these are factual import, uh, sentences are important. There are 47,000 of plant uh, species over here. 10th in the world and 4th highest in, in Asia. And 15,000 uh, flowering plants. And 6% of the total world's, uh, you know, category of flora and fauna. And uh, India also rich in non-flowering plants like fern, algae and fungi. Even they also considered to be as flowering or you know, non-flowering all these plants. And flora ranges from, and one thing I think you're all sure whether that is flora is plants and fauna is animals. And as the name suggests, flora means flower. You know, just remember like that. And uh, flora ranges from one found in tropics to the Arctic region due to countries varied relief temperature and rainfall conditions. That is, you know, from here, what do we find? It's almost like sure enough, it's just a small or a single country. But it's as if, you know, it's like a, a country inside, a, you know, a, a big world inside a country. Lots of different varieties and everything is there. 
and uh, we are, throughout the India, what we can find is the temperature and all these relief of one place will be compared com entirely distinct from the other places. And uh, most of Himalayan and Peninsular regions are covered with indigenous vegetations. Indigenous means the natural or the virgin vegetations, which is you know naturally being uh, sown over there. That is, it's not been artificially grown by humans. There is no human interventions. What has been you know naturally grown grown over that place? And these species are found in North Indian plains and the Thar deserts. And owing to the destructions of forest for agriculture, industry development, several plants are facing extinctions. That is not just for the animal sake. Uh, we also have extinction of plants as well. The vegetal cover of India in large parts is no more than natural in real sense, except some inaccessible regions like Tadas or Himalayas. The vegetation has been destroyed in some places or replaced or degraded by human occupancy. Yes, we all know that and we are guilty of that. And uh, one thing I think uh, this India's vegetation part is, uh, you know, comparatively different from the natural vegetations of throughout the world. I think uh, I'll take that in the next uh, next class. That is tomorrow. I'll get into more clarifications about it, and everything will be detailedly, you know, analyzed, and we could just look into it. And uh, that's it for today's class. And if you have any doubts, do let me know that now. And I really hope that I was able to convey myself about the vegetations, the world vegetations and everything. And if you still have any doubt, just ask me that. I'll clear it now because I'm going to be ending my video. So, yes. So, that's it for today's class. I'll be taking about this India vegetations and rest of the portions tomorrow in the next class. So, see you till then. Bye.